If you are looking for brand strategy ideas to improve your business, improve your brand, sell more of your product or service, you are in the right place. If we haven't had the pleasure yet, my name is Kay Putnam. I'm the psychology driven brand strategist. I have been building brands for well over a decade, have been behind the scenes of thousands of brands between my students, my clients, and my more corporate experience. But let's forget about that and move into your brand. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about building a brand, particularly using psychology-driven brand building, which we're going to get into here in this video. I have four ideas that you can use to improve your brand strategy from ho-hum to hey there. <laughs> These are the four pieces that will make the biggest difference on your business and your bottom line. So let's get into it. First idea for improving your brand strategy is to adopt a particular brand personality. If you haven't noticed, business is getting more and more human over time. We don't want to be treated like just another number. And people are making their purchasing decisions on a subconscious level. As much as 95% of our decisions, including our buying decisions, are made by humans on a subconscious level. So we wanna make sure that we're building a personal connection with our ideal clients. To have a brand personality, it means that we're elevating ourselves beyond the status quo. And my favorite tool in all the lands for incorporating more personality into your brand is to recognize and know and use your primary and secondary brand archetypes. If you don't know what your brand archetypes are, I invite you to check out my quiz on kputnam.com. It's been taken over 100,000 times. And let me break this down for you. So there are 12 archetypes. I mean, there's actually unlimited archetypes, but for them to be useful, we focus in on 12. And these are unconscious patterns that show up across time, across culture, and in many different places. So from walking down the aisles of your grocery store and seeing all of the cereal boxes screaming for your attention, to reading a story or watching a movie or interacting with normal humans on your day-to-day -day life, we embody different archetypes to different extents. And when you embody a primary and a secondary archetype as a brand, you're tapping into things that humans already desire. You're also building in a sense of understanding. People will get you because you're aligning yourself with universal truths. Carl Jung called this the collective unconscious. It's the things that we don't know that we know, but we all know and recognize, right? It also taps into how our brain is always categorizing things to try to understand them. If you show up with the hero archetype like Nike does, you are going to be like the motivating, the no holds bar, relentless brand that's standing up for people or motivating you to do better in your life. Whereas if you adopt more of a lover brand archetype, you're all about the sensuality, like the, the experience of it all, about relating with other people. And you can apply brand archetypes no matter what industry you're in. Some of the biggest brands in the world do this, and it's accessible to us as entrepreneurs who are running smaller businesses as well. So that is your first brand strategy idea. The second brand strategy idea is to collect, curate, and define what your brand stories are. Our human subconscious loves, loves stories. And one of the easiest ones that you can tell as a brand is your brand origin story. How did you come to be? What were the challenges along the way? Who were the humans that were actually involved in starting this brand and why did they do it in the first place? What change do you want to see in this world that you haven't been able to actualize yet? Tell this story as often as you can. It's what connects us to the, the things that we love. 
if we can tell a story about <laughs> the founder of Nike making rubber soles in his waffle maker, we can stomach spending $90 on a pair of tennis shoes. And obviously they've done other things as well, but that story is a really beautiful asset for you to have. So what is yours? What is your brand story? I often tell the story about the origin story of how I found brand archetypes. I'll share it with you here quickly as an example. I was in this really awkward stage in my business. I was being everything to everyone and I was trying to emulate what I was seeing online from successful entrepreneurs. So I had, I was following this entrepreneur who's incredibly luxurious and refined and stylish. So I'm like, okay, I need to be more like her. I'm going to rename my signature service to find your it factor. And then there's this other entrepreneur who's like motivating and aggressive and athletic and had that very masculine forward energy. I'm like, okay, I, you know, I'm a washed up high school athlete. I'm going to have this video, um, video series called your Monday morning kick in the pants. Cringe. <laughs> And I was just, it wasn't working. It was incredibly awkward for me. And you know that it was incredibly awkward for anybody that was coming into contact with my brand because I didn't know how to be me. People kept telling me to just be myself in my brand, but I didn't have a tool to help me do that. So in this rabbit hole of internet links, I found this website that looked like it was built in 1990 on GeoCities or angel fire, and it just listed the 12 archetypes and their goals, their motivations, their fears. And immediately, massive epiphany moment, I was looking at all of these different, art, the entrepreneurs I was following, I'm like, oh, the athletic one has the hero archetype. This refined one that I'm following is the royal archetype. This other one over here that I'd been taking inspiration is the lover, and this one is the entertainer. So. Once I realized that, I realized that nobody was embodying all of the archetypes like I was trying to do. They just had one or two that they were really strong with. And at that point, I created my quiz so that I could figure out what my two were. So there was my origin story for finding archetypes. You can have multiple origin stories. That wasn't the start or birth of my business, but it is a key story that I tell often because it has that emotional resonance with it. The third idea that I'd love to see you take and run with to improve your brand strategy is to stand for something. I love to have people complete what I call the I believe exercise, which is not very creatively named, but to simply list out again and again and again. I return to this exercise myself to this day. What do I believe to be true? What do I believe to be true about relationships, about my clients? about life in general, about success, about work-life balance, about my industry. What can I take a stand for that goes beyond the nuts and bolts of my product or my service? This magnetizes people to us because if people are like, oh yeah, I believe that too, I'm gonna pay attention to what you're saying because you're articulating this and you're sharing this confidently in the market. Extremely powerful tool for you to use. final brand strategy idea is to stand apart. So we're standing up and now we're going to stand apart. So by incorporating our archetypes, I may have already given you a tool to do this because if everybody in your industry is a hero archetype and you come in as the royal, you're going to stand out. So archetypes are a really great way to find some differentiation. But other ways to do this would be to break industry norms. So maybe there's outdated ways that everybody in your business are doing business and it bothers you. So find a way that you can do things deliberately different and then talk about it. Share how you're different. Share what makes you unique in your marketplace. Because if people are in the market for whatever you're selling, that could be the tipping point for them to recognize and to know that you are the best option for them. All right, I hope you enjoyed these four extremely powerful brand strategy ideas. 
Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up if you've found something useful here that you're going to bring into your business. And speaking of that, I would love if you left a comment. Which one of these are you going to use in your business next? I can't wait to hear.